JBN, we keep you informed. Man held after car intercepted with stolen goat meat. The St. Thomas police are to question the suspected driver of a car which was intercepted on Friday with what appeared to be stolen goat meat. The police have also launched a manhunt for three of the men who they said were traveling in the car but escaped before they could be arrested. Initial reports are that sometime after 7 a.m., a great Toyota Isis motor car with four men on board was signaled to stop by officers who were conducting a spot check on the Albion Main Road in St. Thomas. The driver disobeyed the police signal and the law enforcers gave chase. The Toyota Isis, however, did not reach far before it crashed into an embankment. The four men escaped from the vehicle before the police arrived at the scene of the crash. A search of the car by the police revealed two bags with goat meat. Further reports indicate that later that day, a man who was reporting to the police on condition of his bail was taken into custody. He is believed to have been the driver of the car which had earlier been used to flee from the police on the Albion Main Road in St. Thomas. Illegal gun and ammunition seized in Kingston 12. The police are reporting the seizure of a Simiton Western 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 10 9mm cartridges on Myers Street, Kingston 12. The SEAL team from the Admiral Town Police was conducting operations in the area about 2.30 p.m. on Saturday when a premises was searched. According to the police, the firearm and ammunition were found inside a house on a windowsill. No arrest was made. Teen charged with murder of pair at children's home. The St. Elizabeth police are confirming that a 15-year-old boy has been charged with the murder of a 17-year-old at the Manning's Home Child Care Facility for boys in Southfield, St. Elizabeth. The incident happened on Saturday, August 17, about midday, police say. Reports are that the boys were playing football when an argument developed. The 15-year-old allegedly swung a length of metal which hit the 17-year-old in the head. The injured boy was reported a rush to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The 15-year-old has since appeared in the children's court and was remanded in custody. Jamaicans among four men charged in U.S. $1.5 million drug bust in Grenada. Four men, including two Jamaicans, appeared in a magistrate's court on Monday charged in connection with a U.S. $1.5 million drug bust. Grenadian Bernard Spann, 46, businessman Elvis Chance, 47, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Jamaicans Alric Reynolds, 47, a farmer, and a 53-year-old Ian White, appeared at the St. George's No. 1 Magistrate's Court, jointly charged with conspiracy to trafficking in a controlled drug. Additional charges of trafficking in a controlled drug were laid against Reynolds and Chance, while White and Spann were charged with possession of a controlled drug. The court heard that the four men were arrested with 40 kilos of cocaine during a joint police operation last Wednesday night in the capital. The police said the drugs had a street value of $4 million or U.S. $1.5 million. Spann was granted EC $300,000 bail and has to surrender his travel documents and report to a police station three times a week while the other accused were remanded in custody. They will reappear in court on September 5. JUTC, one big headache for Spanish Town commuters. Several Spanish Town St. Catherine commuters have expressed that they believe the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, does not value them and has put more buses on routes that fewer people traverse. The commuters say that each day they wait approximately an hour and a half before they're able to get a bus to go home after a long day of work. An irate commuter was waiting in line at the Mullines Road St. Andrew bus stop last Friday evening, said that every day is faced with the same plight as he tries to get to Spanish Town from the corporate area. Me tired of this now. Every day me cost about it. Awa. Spanish Town people and nobody. For every one of the Spanish town bus that passes here about 5, 75 or 47, I only town people want bus to be poor is a crime. Because if me never poor moon if I go through this daily, but then there me yard in my bed. Just imagine, me get up early and go walk, go make an honest living. And when me figure me yard, me have to wait two to three hours for a bus. You think said easy, figure a walk, and then come stand up on the roadside in a line for another two hours, he lamented. Old Louis, who was standing in the queue, joined in and shared her daily experiences. Some days you come, and you might see a bus waiting, but other days you wait for an hour and a half, especially on Fridays. There are several 47 buses, 
We said them a pass or we stand up and a wait on a Spanish town bus. And the thing about it is you don't have many people traveling to those areas where you have several buses like the 47. A lot of evenings I am standing here and in the 47 buses passing by, me hardly see anybody in there. And me talk about to and fro. I guess this is happening to us because of poor regulation. Because even to get a bus from Crossroads is a problem, she said. Another commuter who was also waiting said she dreaded the start of the school year which begins next week. We wait about an hour and a half every day. We work all day to come and stand up for that long. And then it is about another hour to go home. Imagine when school starts back, it'll go worse. It'll go worse. I don't know, but something needs to be done, she said. We can't continue like this. The transport minister needs to do something if we This is beyond disgusting and unbearable now. Everybody can't afford a car to take taxi. The least them can do is have a better system in place for those who have to depend on the bus. In the morning, in the evening, is the same thing. If we couldn't do better, we'd stand up in the line and attach to this. You think this is easy if you do every day? Some of us have jobs where we have to stand all day. And then when we leave work now and want to go home and rest, we have to wait another two hours before we can get a bus. A rough power man. Every minute you see an empty 47 map pass and look there. Me reach out here from about 5 o'clock and it's now 6.20. And, and none of the bus no come. And when the man that is out here will walk with JUTC, sometimes he will say how a bus are coming at 15 minutes and it's almost an hour before one reach. We're tired of the foolishness, man. Shortly after this, Someone in the line shouted at the JUTC liaison person on the scene. How long for the next bus, Bassey? The man replied to the question. Can't help you at all. When the acting deputy managing director of operations at JUTC, Neville Francis, was contacted, he said that although the number of buses that are placed on the roads during the summer period are fewer than what are normally put on routes during the school period, the wait time for a bus should not be over 40 minutes at any given time. He added that with regards to the 23 route, which traverses Don Robin Avenue, goes on Constant Spring Road, and then into Halfway Tree, the roadworks might add to the waiting period for that route. However, he believes that the commuters traveling the Molines Road route should not have that issue. He also said that the Spanish Town routes are actually the strongest routes that the JUTC has, and that the company ensures that the required number of buses are always placed on the routes. According to Francis, during the summer period, there are nine buses placed on the 23 route. Ten are placed on the 21 route, which goes along Molines Road into Halfway Tree, and five buses are placed on the 21B route, which goes along Molines Road into Halfway Tree and then to Crossroads. He said that the 47 route only has seven buses in the summer period, which would be fewer than what the 23 and 21 Spanish Town routes would have during that time. He also made mention that the company will have 415 buses across the island on various routes in the near future. 889 murders since the start of the year. Jamaica has recorded 889 murders, among them 30 children since the start of the year. This constitutes a 2% increase over the corresponding period last year. The data also show an increase in shootings, aggravated assault, robbery and break-ins. The St. Andrew South Police Division has recorded 103 murders, the highest in the country, followed by Clarendon with 98, St. Catherine South with 87 homicides, and St. James with 85. Sea talk clamping down on counterfeit goods. With back to school shopping now in high gear, the Counter Terrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, Sea talk, is reporting an increase in the sale of counterfeit goods. Assistant Superintendent Victor Barrett, head of the Intellectual Property Unit at SeaTalk, is urging persons to be on the lookout for fake brands. He said the police will be ramping up efforts against illicit trade. SeaTalk on Monday made another major seizure of counterfeit goods at a store in Spanish on St. Catherine. Several counterfeit shoes valued at $20 million were seized. KSAMC moves to license street food vendors. Street food vendors who do not get their businesses registered with the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, by mid-November will have their carts impounded. This comes as the KSMAC seeks to regulate the street food sector. The KSMAC will be in a position where we will do all our internal processes and have the necessary forms for you to fill out by September. When we are done with our thing by the end of September, we will only have a six-week window for everybody to come and register. After this, we are going to have a zero-tolerance approach. 
If you are not registered with the KSAMC, we will take away your cart and impound it, Dwayne Smith, chairman for the Commercial Services Committee, said. Speaking with vendors at the first in a series of consultative meetings on Friday, Smith said the regulation of the street food industry is important to maintain public health and a public order. It's a public health thing. It's not a revenue driver for us. You'll be surprised to know the amount of people who come here on a daily basis or write to us that they have a cart and they want to regularize themselves. But there's really no mechanism for them to do that. That they have no choice but to go on the streets so we are now fixing that problem, he said. We need to know the name of the owner of the cart, the name of who is selling the food, and that persons who are selling the food has to have a food handler's permit. And we also want to know where you're getting the food from. We are trying to protect everybody, he added. Simit said the regulations will also include specific vending zones for food vendors. We're going to have to establish vending zones, so when you come down here, we'll have a form available. You fill out the form, you tell us where you want to operate from, you pay your nominal fee, we do our checks and balances, and you get your approval. And you operate there freely and nobody can come there and harass you, he said. It is not an initiative meant to mash up anybody's business. We're actually encouraging the street food business, but it has to be structured. It has to be organized. What currently obtains cannot be continued, he added. Smith said the KSAMC has not yet settled on the cost for registration, but said it will be affordable. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.